Okay guys, so for our final video of our four part series about motion, we're going to be talking about vertical motion up, alright? And as we begin every video, we must discuss key terms. So, initial, upward, velocity is always greater than zero. Final velocity going up is always zero. So Final velocity equals zero. The time an object takes to go up is equal to the time it comes down. The time an object stays in the air is time air equals time up plus time down. Time up equals time down. Time air equals two times time up or time down. Sorry, my lines keep on going out on me. All right, there we go. All right, so let's look at our diagram. So let's imagine these are balls and that this is a hand that I will try my best to draw, but I'm not very good at it. All right, so the initial velocity going up is always going to be greater than zero. All right, so it's going up. It's going up. And notice how my arrows are getting shorter as we're getting to the final velocity. All right. And so G, the gravity is going down. So it's a force acting on the ball. We have A, B. These are just how I'm going to categorize the balls. C and then D. All right, so the distance is the max. The final velocity, P equals zero. The initial velocity down equals zero. And so now we have gravity going acting down. And so the, um, the motion it takes to fall is going to be the same, the same length. Another hand. Okay. So gravity is going to equal 9.8 meters per second squared. So in these boxes, we're gonna fill in um, a little bit of information to know about this information over here. My diagram hopefully wasn't too confusing. And this is gonna kind of help explain this information over here. See, I also wanna just mention the final velocity at this point equals zero. At this point, it always equals zero and false, okay? So 
the highest point reached by an object going up. So that's the max. That's the max, okay? So velocity equals zero and the distance equals max. All right? So symmetry of this diagram indicates that time up equals time down. So this means that the time these balls take um, to go up is equal to the time balls take to go down. All right, so these A, B, C, and D are all equal. All right, so once uh, the ball falls back into the hands, it equals zero again. Whatever this time is, it's going to equal. This, these times are going to equal, and these times are going to equal. All right. On the way up, the object decreases velocity. So the acceleration is negative. All right. So as I previously mentioned um, in the third series video, um, vertical acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. But in this in um, uh, upward vertical motion, the acceleration is going to equal negative 9.8 meters per second squared okay so let's go ahead and start working on um, some problems so so a ball is thrown upward with a velocity of 24 meters per second how many seconds was it in the air Okay, so let's start on our diagram. So I'm going to draw as best to my ability as a hand. All right, and it's being thrown up at 24 meters per second. All right, and so it's asking us to find how many seconds was it in the air. All right, so our initial velocity is going to equal 24 meters per second. Our final velocity, looking back at our pamphlet, final velocity going up is always zero. So we're going to plug in zero. The distance that we do not need it. So we're going to put a dash. The acceleration, as I discussed, on the way up, the object decreases velocity. The acceleration is negative, so it's going to be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, and so the time is our unknown. So let's go ahead and look back at our equations. So we need one that does not include distance. So this one includes distance, we won't use number two. 3 includes distance, so we won't use number 3. And 4 includes distance, so we won't include number 4. So the only option that leaves us with is number 1. So the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So our final velocity in this um, problem is 0. The initial velocity is 24 plus the acceleration, which is a negative 9.8. And the time, it's our unknown. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract both sides by 24, which equals negative 9.8 times the time. So we're gonna subtract both sides by negative 9.8. And so for our time,
is going to equal positive 2.4 seconds. Since the negatives cancel, cancel out, it's going to be a positive. All right, on to the next one. So what is the initial, what is the original vertical velocity of a ball thrown over a tree 15 meters tall? How long is it in the air? So I'm going to go ahead and make my diagram. So I'm going to make a pretty tree. There we go. That looks tree-like. And so ball thrown over a tree 15 meters tall. So our tree is 15 meters. And our ball is being thrown. Over a tree. Okay. So let's break down our table. So our initial velocity. So we the original initial, same thing. So that's gonna be our unknown. Okay, so we need to look for that. Then we have our final velocity, which is zero. According to our pamphlet, final velocity going up is always zero. So at, we're at this point where the ball is, it equals zero. Our distance is 15 meters. Our acceleration, on the way up the object decreases velocity, the acceleration is negative, so it is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is also our unknown. All right, so this is a two-step problem. So first we're gonna solve for the initial velocity. So we're gonna go to our equations and determine the one that, um, that, does, not that does not have time. So if we look over here, the only one that does not um, the only one that does not have time is number three. So we're going to use that equation. So v f squared equals or the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So zero squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Zero equals vi squared plus two times 9.8 times 15. So it equals 294 negative 294. All right, since that one's negative, everything else gets negative because there's not another negative to cancel out. All right, so we're going to add both sides uh, by 294. So the initial velocity squared equals 294. We're going to square both sides. So the initial velocity is going to equal the square root of 294, which is 17.1 meters per second. All right, since I'm running out of room, I'm going to go ahead and just use the bottom half of this. So next we need to look at um, finding the time. So we have to look for one that includes time. All right. so. I'd say for this case, number one would be the easiest one to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. So we have the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So the final velocity is zero, which equals um, the initial velocity, which is 17.1 plus the acceleration, which equals negative um, 9.8 times the time, which is our unknown. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 17.1 and, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 9.8. So our time is going to equal 17.1 divided by 9.8 which equals 
Um, I, since the negatives cancel out, I'm just going to write one. I'm just gonna, it's gonna be a positive 1.7 seconds. All right, so those are our answers. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopes, I hope it helped a lot. Um, feel free to uh, highlight any um, parts of your pamphlet to help you read um, the material a little bit better. Um, I highly recommend it and it looks really pretty to look at. So I hope this video helped. Have a wonderful day.